Greetings humanity of all over the world. We are anonymous. The shadow forces behind the new world order, are following a slow paced agenda of total control over mankind, and our planet's resources. David Icke coined it, the totalitarian tiptoe, because they, are making very small steps towards our complete and definitive enslavement. As a result, the masses remain relatively unaware of the fact that their liberties are being gradually taken away, while the power of the New World Order octopus grows steadily. Somewhere near the very top of the pyramid, an extremely elitist organization known as the Council of the Thirteen Families, orchestrates all of the major world events. As the name suggests, the Council consists of the top 13 most influential families on Earth. An increasingly number of people is becoming aware, that 99% of the Earth's population is controlled by an elite of 1%, but the Council of the 13 families consists of less than 1% of the 1% elite, and nobody on Earth can apply for membership. In their opinion, they are entitled to rule over the rest of us, because they believe that they are the direct descendants of the ancient gods, and consider themselves royal. These families are 1. Rothschild, Bauer, or Bauer 2. Bruce 3. Cavendish, Kennedy 4. De Medici 5. Hanover 6. Habsburg 7. Krupp 8. Plantagenet 9. Rockefeller 10. Romanov 11. Sinclair, St. Clair. 12. Warburg, Del Banco. 13. Windsor, Saxe Coburg Goth. Personally, I suspect that this may not be the complete list and some very powerful lineages are still unknown to us. The Rothschild dynasty is unquestionably the most powerful, visible, bloodline on Earth, and their estimated wealth is around $500 trillion. They exercise their power through the world banking empire, which is almost entirely owned by them. The most important institutions that work hard to establish the new world order and completely enslave our species, are 1. The City of London, Finance, controlled by the Rothschilds, not part of the United Kingdom. 2. The United States Federal Reserve, Finance, private bank, owned by the Rothschilds. Not part of the United States. 3. The Vatican City, indoctrination, deception and scare tactics. Not part of Italy. 4. Washington DC, military, mind programming, brainwashing and depopulation. Not part of the United States. All of the above institutions function as individual states operating under their own laws, hence, there is no court of law on earth, that could ever prosecute them. The multitude of secret societies in existence today, operate as branches of a mega corporation, which is owned by the council of the 13 families. Even though they have been handsomely rewarded for their work, the members of these secret societies are not members of the elite bloodlines, they don't know who their masters are, and they have no idea what the real agenda is. Another mass enslavement tool that they are using against us, is the so-called educational system. Schools are no longer what they used to be, and children are learning to memorize without thinking, and obey without questioning. In fact, this established educational system is extremely expensive to keep operational, and obsolete in the age of the internet. Why obsolete? You may ask. Because the internet gives us free access to almost infinite amounts of information. So why are we still paying huge amounts of money for governmental education? Because the world's elite require that our children learn conformity and inside the box thinking, Mankind's faith is hanging in the balance right now, as the control of the New World Order octopus spreads. On the one hand, we are very close to our complete enslavement, while on the other hand, we could easily crumble to the ground their pyramid of power, by simply uniting against their deception in a peaceful revolution of minds, hearts and souls. 
we've asked for years what their greatest weapon of enslavement is. Is it poor education combined with constant indoctrination? Is it the fear generated by religion? Is it the fear of being punished, jailed, or killed by the system, or is it the invisible enslavement of the monetary system? In our opinion, all of the above combined, had a huge impact on our society and the way we think, but their biggest weapon is hands down the financial system. The financial system has stealthy enslaved our species and now we are being used as currency slaves. We all work from 9 to 5 every day, in boring and depressing environments, not stimulated by anything creative or constructive. In most cases, the sole motivation for going to work, is the next paycheck, and no matter how hard we work, we never seem to have enough money. Have you ever wondered why mega corporations reaping billions a year in profits, pay dozens of millions to their CEOs, and as close as possible to the minimum wage to the rest of the employees? This has been carefully designed, because a person that is constantly on the edge, will never have time for self-education, introspection, and eventually, spiritual awakening. Isn't this our main purpose on earth? To become spiritual beings, and by spiritual, we obviously don't mean religious, and complete the incarnation cycle. They don't need educated people, who are capable of critical thinking and have spiritual goals. No, this kind of people are dangerous to the establishment. They want obedient robots, just intelligent enough to operate the machines and keep the system running, but stupid enough never to ask questions. All of the world's biggest problems have their roots deeply embedded in the financial plague, wars are profitable, diseases are profitable, earth's plundering is profitable, human slavery and inhumane working conditions are profitable. Our leaders have been corrupted by money, and mankind's collective mission on earth, has been hijacked by money. So why do we need the financial system, in the first place? Actually, we don't need it, at least, not anymore. The planet doesn't charge us a cent for using its natural resources and we have the technology to extract them without physically working a day. More to the point, there are brilliant minds out there, discussing the concept of a resource-based economy for decades. One example is Mr. Jack Fresco, a brilliant industrial designer and social engineer, who spent most of his life designing the future. The cities proposed by Mr. Jack Fresco will be built by autonomous construction robots and will be eco-friendly and self-sustainable, earthquake and fireproof. Other people are already discussing the transition plan towards the economy of the future, where money are no longer required, and all individuals will be offered the best conditions to reach their highest potentials, all for the benefit of our species, as a whole. So, our question is, are we ready to embrace the future, and escape the control of the elite in a world without money? Or are we going to allow the new world order plan to happen? We are all anonymous by default. United as one. Divided by none. To the rich, greedy, filthy slave creators. You will be removed. Expect that. Now that we know Vice President Dick Cheney and Senator Barack Obama are distant cousins, it, in my book, there's a lot of genealogical research, you know, going back, Dick's family, my family, these heroic and amazing tales of people who went west. But one of the things I discovered is that Dick and Barack Obama are eighth cousins. What? Is that an amazing thing? Yes, if you go back eight generations, really? they have a common ancestor. The New York Post decided to check into the genealogy of President Bush, and his family tree has people talking. Many of the United States presidents have blood relations with each other. The Bush lineage has blood ties to a great number of former presidents. George Washington, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses Grant, Rutherford Hayes, James Garfield, Grover Cleveland, Teddy Roosevelt, William Taft, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin Roosevelt, Richard Nixon, and Gerald Ford. We all know his father, but what about his cousins? 
Check out this family tree, done with research by Ancestry.com. Let me take you through this, branch by branch. Vice President Dick Cheney, the man who's only a heartbeat away from the presidency, is actually a blood relation. He's President Bush's ninth cousin once removed. Cheney's cousin Barack Obama is also Bush's 11th cousin, and the ninth cousin of Brad Pitt. In either of those first two books, though, who knew you and Dick Cheney cousins? You know, uh, listen, <laughs> the, uh, I don't think I'm going to family reunion. Uh, I don't know how I'll, how I'll be greeted. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Tessarion points out in his work that Bush is closely related to every European monarch on and off the throne and has kinship with every member of Britain's royal family. Bush's family tree can be documented as far back as the early 15th century. He has a direct descent from Henry III and from Henry VIII's sister Mary Tudor. He is also descended from Charles II of England. What if we were to tell you that American presidents aren't chosen by ballot, but instead by blood? Look, uh, 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 there's a... That's right. The candidate with the bluest blood has won the race for president every time. And according to a man who writes things on the Internet, 33 U.S. presidents are descendants of Emperor Charlemagne. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? And it doesn't stop there. These guys aren't just related to royalty. They're related to each other. But we're only just getting started. President Lincoln was President Bush's seventh cousin five times removed. And Bush shared more than just a ballot with John Kerry. That's right, their ninth cousins twice removed. Princess Diana was Bush's 11th cousin twice removed. But, uh, <laughs> no, you know, these folks have been doing all these genealogies on me, and, and right. you know, they've, they've found all sorts of strange connections. This has got to be the strangest thing. Well, listen, if you go back far enough, yeah. you know, you got all kinds of crooks and thieves in your family. <laughs> Incest was practiced by ancient Egyptian royalty. Mothers married sons and brothers married sisters to keep the power and the money all in the family. Like their Pharaonic ancestors, the British monarchy have a long history of incestuous inbreeding. And then there's this bombshell. Happy President. Sure, she may have been singing to JFK, but what about GWB? He is, after all, her ninth cousin, three times removed. Clinton's related to Ford, Bush is related to Cheney, and guess who Cheney's related to? That's right, Barack Obama. What did you make of that? For those who don't know this, so, so Lynn Cheney, the vice yeah. president's wife, has been doing some genealogy right. connected to her latest book, right. and lo and behold, way back, what, eight generations eight ago? Eight generations or You something. and Mr. Cheney apparently have some distant relative in <laughs> What did you make of that story when it came You know, out? I actually knew about it because somebody had done some genealogy before, uh -huh. uh, and uh, they had sent it to me, this long sheet, and, you know, had all these famous names, you know, Mark Twain and this and that and the other, and then Dick Cheney, and I, I took a pause. And, you know, I, I just said, well, you know, as long as... Uh, as long as he's okay with it, I'm, I'm okay with it too, because yeah. I'm not going to stop talking about uh, these messed up policies in Iraq. <laughs> just because. You're going to be your cousin. Yeah, we're not, we're not kissing cousins, as they say. <laughs> and we also find that George W. Bush is a direct descendant of Godfrey the Bullion. Godfrey was the first king of Jerusalem after he recaptured it from the Saracens, which was the name for the Islamic faith during the Middle Ages. It is interesting to note that the current occupation of the United States in the Middle East was re-established by the same family, George Bush Sr. in 1991 and again by George Bush Jr. in 2003. George Bush Jr. is then found to be a cousin to both opposing candidates of his two terms in office, Al Gore and John Kerry. Democratic President Barack Obama also has blood ties with George W. Bush, as well as Gerald Ford, Lyndon Johnson, Harry Truman, James Madison, and the British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill. On the opposing side of the 2008 presidential ballot, John McCain is descended from Robert the Bruce, King William I of Scotland, and also Godfrey de Bullion. He's also related to Playboy founder Hugh Hefner, even Pocahontas, and Vlad the Impaler. Well, Mitt Romney and Mike Huckabee are tenth cousins once removed, also known as kissing cousins. And Rudy Giuliani, well, he's just related to the mob. Holy shit. What about Hillary? Well, she's tenth cousins with Madonna and ninth cousins with Angelina Jolie. I did not have 
sexual relations with that woman. And of course, Barack Obama has said he doesn't think he and Cheney are kissing cousins, but Brad Pitt says if it's true, he's in great company. It is a big idea, a new world order. And when it was in Rome, that's when we had the creation of the Roman Empire and the creation of the Roman Church that became uh, Christianity as we know it. I just want to pick um, um, three secret societies up that were formed around the time of the Crusades. In the 1100s, they were formed and grew into the 1200s. One of them was called the Teutonic Knights. Another one, the Knights Hospitaller of St. John of Jerusalem. This crusade, one of the most massive sweeping in history, was actually orchestrated by a secret brotherhood, the Priory of Sion and the Knights Templar. In the 19th century, um, artifacts and, and uh, things were found Signs were found that the Templars had been under Temple Mount. Whatever, something changed very quickly after around nine years because a couple of these guys came back to France and started signing up the aristocratic families of Europe. They clearly knew something big time. The papacy declared these Priory Knights, these Knights Templar, of limitless power. By the 1300s, the Templars had grown too powerful across Europe. The Pope had declared the Knights Templar saint worshippers. said God had charged him with cleansing the earth of these heretics. The plan went off like clockwork. The Templars were all but exterminated. The date was October 13th, 1307, Friday. Friday the 13th. And they went runabout. They almost certainly went to the Americas because the knowledge of the Americas existed and goes back a long way in the secret um, uh, knowledge line. By the name of Adam Weishaupt forms a secret society known as the Order of the Illuminati. Charles Taze Russell, who created the uh, Jehovah's Witness uh, movement, along with others, uh, Merovingian bloodline, buried under a, a pyramid in America. Now, Joseph Smith, who started the Mormon Church, which is an Illuminati front, big time in Salt Lake City, Merovingian blood. The secret meeting of the world's power elite. At Yale University, the science of America's first families confess their sexual exploits from a gruesome coffin. In a smoke-filled room, a handful of power brokers manipulate the global economy. On May 14, 1948, the state of Israel is reborn. Personally, I do not believe that the Bible addresses such issues as... Symbolizing fascism comes out of the Roman Empire because these rods symbolize individuality tied together, ruled by the accent here. You still don't get it, do you, boys? There ain't no countries anymore. No more good guys. They're running the whole show. They own everything. What's wrong with having it good for a change? And they're going to let us have it good if we just help them. They're going to leave us alone. Let's make some money. You can have a little taste of that good life, too. Now, I know you want it. Hell, everybody does. You do it to your own kind. What's the threat? We all sell out every day. Might as well be on the winning team. Satan's greatest trick was convincing man he didn't exist.